God so loveth the world as to give his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth him may not perish, but may have life everlasting. the octave masses of this week, so we'll have an extended examination of the coming of the Holy Spirit and how important it is for us to realize that the Holy Spirit changed the whole world. Right? So we see that, as you know, Jesus died on the cross. He only had 12 followers, as it were, several disciples, 120 as we saw. But then thereafter, with the coming of the Holy Ghost, and yesterday we learned that 3,000 were converted the first day and then the second day, which is this, when, when, this Monday, as it were, there were 5,000 in the temple. And we saw in today's gospel, today, uh, not gospel, is the Acts of the Apostles, how the Holy Spirit came upon them. Don Garanger tells us, talking about the Holy Spirit, in order that Jesus might reign, reign, a world such as ours was there, was need of a miracle. Nay, of a miracle, as Boswe observes, comparable to that of creation, whereby God draws being out of nothingness. Now it was the Holy Ghost who worked this miracle. He willed that we who have never seen the Lord Jesus should be as certain of his being over our Messiah and God, as though we had witnessed his wonderful works and heard his divine teaching. For this end, he achieved the mir master miracle of the conversion of the world, wherein God chose the weak things of the world, that he might con confound the proud and the strong, and the things that are not, that he might bring to naught the things that are. By this stupendous fact, which was evident to men, at the noonday sun, the Holy Ghost made his presence known and felt by the world. He gave, the, gave them three things that day, the, the apostles as it were, to preach the word which was signified by the tongues that sat upon them, the ardor of love expressed by the fire, the gift of miracles which they exercised that very morning. The word is the sword wherein, wherewith they are armed. Love is the source of their dauntless courage. Miracles win, win men's attention to their teaching. So that's three things, very, very important, as we see here. The order of, the, the, the order of love signified by the tongues of fire and the gift of miracles and the power to preach the word by the gift of tongues. But he does not confine his action to this. It is not enough for men to hear the word and admire the courage and witness the miracles of the apostles. Neither is it sufficient that they should see the force of truth and the beauty of virtue or, not, or acknowledge the disgrace and sinfulness of their own manner of life. In order for a conversion of heart to confess that Jesus who was preached to them is God, to love him, be baptized, promise fidelity to him, even to martyr them it, if required, for all this there was a need of a, the grace of the Holy Spirit. He alone can take away the stony heart as the prophet expresses it and give a heart of flesh, filled with supernatural faith and love. Hence, he will accompany his ministers wheresoever they pre preach the gospel. The visible working is theirs, the invisible his. Man's salvation is to be the result of the two united, the working of the apostles and the work of the Holy Spirit. They must be applied 
to each individual, and each individual must freely yield his assent to the exterior preaching of the apostle and to the interior action of the Holy Spirit. Truly, it is an undertaking of extreme difficulty to bring mankind to receive Jesus as its Lord and King. But after three centuries of contest, the cross of our Redeemer will be standing around that the whole civilized wor world will be rallied. As soon as the solemnity was over, these men who were, have received the faith and are now truly children of Abraham by holy baptism, return to their several provinces of the Gentile world. Whence they came, they return, return bearing in their hearts that Jesus, whom they have acknowledged to be the Messiah, their God and their Savior. Let us honor these first fruits of Holy Church, these trophies of the paraclete spirit, these messengers of good tidings. They will soon be followed by the disciples of the cynical, who after use, using in vain every means that zeal could devise for the conversion of the proud and ungrateful Jerusalem will turn to the Gentiles. So that of the Jewish nation, a very small minority has acknowledged the son of David as the heir of the father of the family. The body of the people has rebelled against him and is running headlong to destruction. By what name are we to call their crime? The proto-martyr, Saint Stephen, speaking to these unworthy children of Abraham says, O oh, stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye to, the, ye to the Spirit of God is their crime. And the apostles, finding the favored people determined to refuse truth, turn to them that are sitting in darkness in the shadow of death. These are the Gentiles. And upon them, as the apostles are henceforward to lavish the torrents of grace which Jesus has merited for mankind by his sacrifices. These messengers of the word of life carry the treasure to pagan lands. Every opposition in man's power is made against them, but they triumph over all. The Holy Spirit gives efficacy to his own indwelling within them. He acts himself on their souls, of, on the souls of their, their hearers, and rapid is the spread of faith in Jesus. A Christian colony is soon found in Antioch, then in Rome, then Alexandria. The tongue of fire runs through the world beyond even the farthest limits of the Roman Empire, which, as the prophets had foretold, was to serve as the instrument for establishing the kingdom of Christ. India, China, Ethiopia, and a hundred other distant countries hear the word of the heralds of the gospel of peace. The prince of this world, the old serpent, makes use of the most violent means for staying the conquest of these messengers of the Holy Spirit. He has Peter crucified and Paul beheaded. He spared not one of the glorious chieftains. They are gone, and yet his defeat is terrible to his pride. The mystery of Pentecost has created a new people. The seed sown by the apostles has produced an immense harvest. Nero's persecution has swept away the Jewish leaders of the Christian host, but they had done their grand work. They had established a church among the Gentiles. We sang their, their triumph in our yesteryear, yesterday's introit. The spirit of the Lord has filled the whole earth. Alleluia. How magnificent, O Holy Spirit, is thy triumph. How divine is that this kingdom of Jesus, which thou thus foundest in spite of human folly and malice or Satan's power, strong as it then was upon the earth. Thou infusest into millions of souls the love of religion, which demands the most heroic sacrifices from its followers. Thou answerest the specious objections of man's reason, 
by the eloquence of miracles and hearts that once were slaves to concupiscence and pride are inflamed by thee with such a love of Jesus that they cheerfully suffer every torture, yea, and death itself for thy, his dear sake. For three centuries did these three prodigies, did these prodigies of the Holy Spirit continue, and then the victory was complete. Jesus was acknowledged as the King and Savior of the world, as the teacher and redeemer of mankind. Satan was driven from the kingdom he had usurped, and idolatry was either abolished by the faith in the one true God, or they that still kept it up were looked upon as ignorant and depraved beings. Now this victory, which has, was gained first over the Roman Empire and since then over so many other infidel nations, is the work of the Holy Ghost. The miraculous manner of this, its accomplishment is one of the chief arguments whereon our faith rests. We have not seen or heard Jesus, and yet we confirm him to be our God because of the evident testimony given of him by the Spirit whom he sent to us. May all creatures then give glory and thanks and love to this holy paraclete who has thus put us in possession of salvation brought us by our Emmanuel. My dear friends, I hope that these passages inspire us with great appreciation for the work of the Holy Spirit in our time. And when you think about it, for 2,000 years the Holy Spirit has been enlightening the church. And now in these times, with Our Lady's message, we need to rekindle that same spirit with the Holy Rosary and do all that we can because we have a new paganism in our world and the Holy Spirit is ready to pour forth all his graces if we cooperate and we have to listen to Our Lady that many, many souls will be saved if we pray and sacrifice. Now is the hour. I just spent a little time listening to the Remnant TV on what's going on in our world and a magnificent talk on what's going on in America at this time. And the highlight of the talk was we need to get back to traditions, to the teachings of the church, and we need to get back to the Holy Mass that we have here today. And we need the courage and the fortitude of, of the apostles and all their disciples at the time of the Holy Spirit. We need that today. So pray, my friends, pray for our church, pray for its priests, its bishops, and all the lay faithful, that we will have another in rekindling of the Holy Spirit in our time during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. We need this. Only the Holy Spirit, through the miraculous, through the, the work of Our Lady, can help us. So have faith. Pray your rosary devotedly and realize what the Holy Spirit did 2,000 years ago in ancient Rome, conquering the mighty Roman Empire. He can do today, and he will do today if we follow through. So do your best and keep praying and sacrificing for the salvation of souls. May the Lord bless you.